So um, what, what were you guys, you guys had like three conversations in the span of 10 minutes that we were gone. So what, mm-hmm. what, what well, did you guys want to start they were all just primers. Uh-huh. So the, the first primer was, Primers. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> uh, I, I, I wanted to know why Josh, why did you choose the paleo guidelines? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, uh, I've been a dietary experimenter for a long time. Uh, What's a long time? A long time being, uh, at least the past, uh, seven years. Okay. So, um. Toward the end of college, I start. I stopped being able to run on Tortino's pizzas and things like that, and <laughs> right. began to feel it. And uh, and so, um, I've done. I mean, shoot, I did a raw food diet for a month. Right, I oh. I ate almost no meat at one time because I I thought there were just awful ecological consequences to that. It's a bit of a green streak in me, but I I have since decided that that's a little load of nonsense and that in you know industrial raised meat may be unsustainable you know raising acres and acres of corn to feed to an animal but letting them eat grass all day long is actually actually just fine the planet can handle that so um and now i've gone all the way to to, to being a hunter and a meat eater and so um in those experiments though uh i just never felt looked or performed better than on paleo so when i ran across that um I just tried it, right? I just tried mm-hmm. it. And, uh, you know, cutting out uh, grains and, and uh, legumes and dairy and things like that. Um, and, you know, the dairy's still debatable, but the grains are, uh, are pretty non-negotiable in the paleo world. I, I watched my muscle increase in my, in my body fat percentage drop within just a week's time of going completely grain-free. And... Um, uh, so I just saw a lot of a lot of improvements, and then you know, food quality. Um, you and I had a little thing going about the importance of, of micronutrients and things like that. Um, so I've been off processed food for a long time now, and if I do eat it, it'll actually make me feel a bit wacky. Right. So why can't you just down a multivitamin and then have it all have it solve all your problems? Yeah, because <laughs> multivitamin is very reductionist, right? It's it's. It's missing all kinds of compounds that we don't even know about, and and we certainly don't have the quantities right and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, if you eat a, a grass-fed, um, berry-fed, twig-fed, bark-fed piece of wild-hunted venison, the the micronutrients you're going to get out of that exceed uh, anything a, a, a vitamin could ever hope to be. Yeah, I, that's that's how that topic came up. Was that I said that was my biggest mistake with carb night, which Josh disagreed with, with me that it was necessarily a mistake, but that I tried to make carb night too easy for people, and I didn't fully understand the implications of allowing so much processed food into the diet, and, and it turns out it makes a big difference uh, for health. For fat loss, it's it's hard to say because a lot of people who use the diet have an extra mm-hmm. 40, 50 pounds of fat. Like I said, it, it's not that hard to get rid of – start getting rid of body fat at that at that right. point. You, you do just one thing right and you're going to start shedding some pounds. Uh, but down at the more performance-oriented or – I am I just in general consider low body fat levels, 10% or lower to be performance levels. Mm that it it really matters everything matters at that point yeah and um again getting into this the way i did by looking for the cause and the cure of of diabetes that everything i had learned about that when i you know such as that type 2 diabetes is in many many cases completely reversible Mm -hmm. Which is something that you just don't hear many many doctors shouting about and right or paula dean she can live with diabetes exactly but she's dying in two years right there's a whole market of products for this new uh you know constituency of diabetics right it's it's, it's like a race of people now who who have a whole product line and (laughs) and we're going to help them lead a normal life and they can go to mcdonald's too and all that kind of crap and so uh when i came across paleo everything i learned about how to um reverse diabetes it it adhered to right so Mm -hmm. i think um you know the the decision you made with carb night is very similar to to the one Tim Ferriss made, I think, which is well, let's not let's not uh, let's not cut out the legumes because people like beans and burritos and things like that, and let's have a cheat day where they can eat whatever they want for a whole day, and 
and he uh, supposedly, you know, ran ran adherence tests, and the people who he gave those to, you know, uh, leniences to, were were the adherence was just was just really really high. And so the thing you hear, like, if you were to look at my my protocol, which is you know this high fat paleo kind of diet. Um, the immediately folks coming from maybe the audience that you were first addressing, they would say, you mean I don't get to eat this and I don't get to eat that and I don't get to eat this and that. And it just looks so daunting to them because what they can't see are all the things that they get to eat that they've never even considered before. Right. So, Yeah, that's that's the amazing thing with carb night. When people get rolling on it, they're like, oh, I never thought to do this. And mm-hmm. I, I put these things together and oh my gosh, this was amazing. And, yeah. and it's usually just simple combinations of food. Right that they're not going to try when they have an option of Stouffer's frozen lasagna to take home. Yep. You know, you just, you don't think to be creative with food because yeah. somebody else did it for you. Yeah. You know, it might be heavily inundated with chemicals and whatever beef extract or beef flavoring uh, that a lot of fast food restaurants use because their beef doesn't taste like beef anymore. Uh, people, people get all these great ingredients and they get very creative with them. Yeah. This is the reason why on my carb nights, I never eat pancakes because on when I'm eating very low carb, like ultra low carb during the week, I can make pancakes. I just make them out of almond flour. Mm -hmm. Like, and you just end up not missing anything whatsoever Mm -hmm. because once you learn to reconfigure a few things, it's not a big deal. And if you guys don't know, uh, coconut flour pancakes, you ever try those? Yeah. I mean, they take a little bit of getting used to. You're not going to fool. You're not going to go. You're not going to slide them in at IHOP and have people not notice. But incredibly bready texture and darn near close to zero carbs. That protein, that uh, that coconut flour is just pure protein and fiber. It's yeah. amazing. I'll share with you my coconut flour crust recipe nice. for pie crust. Thank you. Please do. Well, Pretty you need to share the entire pumpkin pie recipe too, which yeah, I think the filling the filling has gotten a lot better. I think I, I think I perfected I, the filling. Did you? I thought it was pretty good the last time I tasted well, it. Well, so. thank you. Yeah, we're trying to put together a recipe book for that exact reason mm-hmm. that like people just don't have enough. They don't have enough options, or they feel they don't have enough options, and yeah. you just need to kind of put things in front of their face. Like, you know what you could do is just saute some bacon and put some greens in it. Exactly. And they go, oh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Oh my god. <clears throat> so, so the diet. So my protocol looks super restrictive until I mean, you realize that. I had I drank half a stick of butter with my coffee that morning, and <laughs> um, which is there's a little trick from from Dave Asprey there, and and when I have a sweet tooth, I cut up a bunch of strawberries and pour coconut milk on it, and I'm getting the fatty, I'm getting the sweet, but you know strawberry has 0.8 grams of carbs, right. so I could have 30 strawberries or one banana, right? I don't want 30 strawberries. I'll actually settle for 10. You know, after 10 strawberries, I don't really want anymore. So tricks like these, people just have no clue of, and it takes I think it takes sort of um, protocols that aren't that aren't um, off-putting to them to just get them into the space. I agree. Mm. How would you feel about how do you feel about carb night in in general? Even when I try to convince people to go clean during the week, uh, clean being non-processed, I still have no problem encouraging them to eat donuts and cheesecake on the weekends, depending on their tolerance for gluten. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about that? So, <clears throat> I'm I am coming from a again a very different community and maybe with different goals and so um anybody anybody coming to my protocol would not be encouraged to do that because (laughs) um so part of the anti-aging aspect it's not all about autophagy it may be um largely about autophagy but um preventing the cellular damage to begin with um by preventing something called glycation so anytime the body's produce uh processing sugar uh, carbs, of course, become sugar. Excess protein can even become carbs, and so on. Um, there's a slight inefficiency in the in the metabolism of that sugar, and a little sugar molecule goes flying off wildly and sort of binds to a to the mitochondria and other things. And that um, may be a major aging mechanism, actually. So part of what this catch-all term aging refers to are all kinds of glycated proteins gumming up the body. And so um, so I tend to go uh, ultra-low carb throughout the week, and then, and, and then you know, even my high-carb days are low-carb to the average American. So I'm looking for sufficient amounts of carb um, to prevent this glycation sort of thing. And then uh, just for, you know, some people say to me, like, what about moderation, right? And everything in moderation. And, and for people like me, who I think have been addicted to, to sugar, 
um, through because of their childhoods and whatnot. I think a lot of times, let's talk about moderation. You're talking about moderation with addictive foods, and that's very that's very hard for. So most people ask right. me about moderation, and I'll say, "Well, how's that working for you?" And yeah. it's like, "Well, not it's not working for me, but in theory, it could work." You know, right. and it's just like, "Well." I think most people who talk about everything in moderation are are in the habit of making excuses for their binges right a lot yeah yeah. right it's like well yeah i only do heroin in moderation exactly yeah i i actually i've i've worked with people that have totally dropped off the radar after say a month or two of carb night and they've just disappeared and when i get back in touch with them they literally it's amazing the fallout because they're those type of people that are addicted to sugary foods and they've broke Mm. And they literally will lock themselves mm-hmm. in their apartment mm-hmm. for a week eating nothing but trays of brownies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that literally happened to a client once. Yeah. And I couldn't get a hold of them. I didn't know what was going on. I thought possibly there was a family emergency. I just I had no information whatsoever. And yeah. they did an amazing amount of damage yep. in a week. It was just phenomenal. And that's when I first realized that carb night is – in the way it's laid out in the book, it's probably not appropriate for people with food addictions. I'd, I'd make, I'd just make better choices on those carb nights with, um, you know, get that sweet potato and slather it with butter first of all to help the. the I usually go with coconut oil or coconut oil. Yeah, or pour some or pour, even pour some freaking MCT oil on there. Yeah. You really gotta yeah. keep keep dropping the pounds. Um, and and honestly, like I I don't eat bananas throughout the week because uh, we know now that fructose uh, is is a. Uh, more reactive sort of glycating sort of agent than pure glucose and and so two bananas with coconut milk on 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 my carb day just seems indulgent to me now and it's all relative right so if you eat if you eat uh captain crunch for breakfast well my god what does dessert have to look like to you (laughs) right Right. so right and they've shown that people when they eat these really rich sweet foods they get less of a hedonic response from them later on. It yeah. just doesn't taste as good. Yeah. My baseline is so low that it's just like, right, <laughs> right. exactly. <laughs> so. Whoa, any type of sugar at all, and you're just excited. Right. Sweet potato is like candy to me now. So Yeah, I always like, uh, and I don't know how you feel about overcooking them, but I like to overcook them to where the caramel starts to come out of the end of the skins. And yeah, way. that's not popular in the anti-aging oh, community, but so I got to say when, when I'm faced with that uh, mildly charred, you know, oozing yeah. sweet potato skin, I, I down it. And yeah. we still got to be a thousand miles away from, from the unhealth that I started with. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. the indulgence of the <laughs> right. of the yummy <laughs> sweet potato skin so oh my god i just <laughs> i lost control and i overcooked all my sweet potatoes so i could get to the caramel but on a serious <laughs> note you because you can reset and kind of reestablish this baseline you can walk away from that caramelized sweet potato skin <laughs> feeling like you just were naughty and you know like we'll go right. we'll go easy tomorrow then because i did have that skin tonight so <laughs> i say reset that baseline and get to that point so uh Actually, talking about cycling uh, your food like that and being able to reset, when do you choose? Do you choose to work out on any particular type of day? For example, your low carbohydrate days or your carbohydrate days, or is, is it just random? It's it's totally random for me um, because I again I don't prioritize exercise like I should, and so I or I don't even know if I I should, but for my goals I don't prioritize exercise, and I quite often exercise at the airport of all things because. <laughs> You're about to be cramped on a plane in a mm-hmm. position that's not healthy for you for oh, way I too long. I do the same thing. Yeah, it's cool. And I, I, I risk looking stupid and all that, and I do like... Well, you don't risk it. You I'll do bolt right. and split squats <laughs> yeah. or something like that yeah. off of the seats. And, yeah. I find that's an incredible way to also gauge just how independent of a thinker you actually are. So we all want to think that we're independent thinkers. Well, when you're sitting around 300 sedentary people in a room who are all going to watch you work out by yourself, now we'll see just, just how confident you feel. And I have a battle with myself every time. <laughs> But um, <clears throat> I make myself do it. So there's that. There's um, if I've just if I've just been home for a while, it'll just hit me that it's been it's been four days since I did even my mm-hmm. my brief. I just do body weight resistance to be honest. Um, but the pull ups, the push ups, there's a lot of modified kind of dive bomber kind mm-hmm. of things you can do. Um, so I'm still just doing body weight resistance. Um, 